Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to talk about what is mean by the term transgressive segregation, how can it be explained and please take a look at this picture. So we have one parent here, another parent here and in, uh, if we compare the sizes we can expect that the progeny have to be intermediate size. So uh, we expect that uh, progeny would be a blend of their parents. For example, it can be uh, tallness, uh, it can be any other trait. But sometimes what we can see, we can see that in the progeny we can uh, see not only just phenotypes of the parents, like uh, example here, not just blend of the uh, phenotypes of the parents, but extreme phenotypes that we can cannot see in parental generation. This is exactly uh, what we call transgressive segregation and how it can be explained. So take a look. For example, one parent, so parent one, would be of the genotype which is small a, small a, small b, small b, and capital C, capital C. And we cross with another parent, parent 2, who is going to be of the genotype capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, and small c, small c. Now let's imagine that each recessive allele would add one centimeter to the plant uh, height and each dominant allele would add 10 centimeters. So that means that uh, phenotypes would be different. For example, parent on the left would have a phenotype which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 centimeters plus 20. So phenotype would be 24 centimeters of this plant. And this genotype would produce different phenotype which is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 42 centimeters. So 42 centimeters. And if we cross these two parents, we expect that uh, next generation would be uh, of the following genotypes. So capital A, small a, capital B, small b, and capital C, small c. Because this parent only can contribute recessive allele to the next generation and this parent only can give dominant allele A for the gene A. As for the gene B, this parent only can give recessive allele B, it doesn't matter which this one or this one, but this parent only can give dominant allele B, again it doesn't matter which one, so we know that uh, next generation have to be heterozygous for the gene B. The same is true for the gene C. So next generation is going to be F1 generation. And uh, as for the uh, phenotype, again 10 centimeters, 1 centimeter, 10 centimeters, 1, 10 and 1. So it's going to be 33 centimeters. And this is exactly uh, in the middle between these two uh, phenotypes. Uh, not exactly in the middle, but uh, as you see, this is a blend. So uh, it falls into this category, which we expect that uh, progeny have to be a blend of the parents. So have to be somewhere and shows an intermediate phenotype. But imagine now that we self-pollinate these plants, that means that we cross with the same genotype. It can be self-pollination or we can just choose two different plants from F1 generation, but the genotype is going to be identical, the same. So in uh, next generation, what we expect, this is going to be F2 generation. We expect a range of uh, different genotypes, for example, starting from uh, small a, small a, small b, small b, small c, small c, and it can be 
capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, and capital C, capital C. For example, uh, this parent can contribute recessive allele, this parent also can contribute recessive allele. This parent can contribute recessive, this parent can contribute recessive, and the same is true for the allele C. And vice versa, this parent can contribute dominant allele, also dominant allele, dominant, dominant, capital C, capital C here. So uh, in this case, we can expect that this, uh, for example, genotype would equal to plan that is going to be of the six centimeters um, tall and this genotype would produce a phenotype which is going to be 60 centimeters tall. As you see, the range of the phenotypes is going to be greater than in the hybrid parents and uh, greater than uh, in the parental generation here. So we have 24 centimeters and 42 but in F2 generation, we see 6 centimeters and 60. And this explains uh, this picture, how it is possible that uh, when we cross two parents, uh, they may have uh, in their progeny phenotypes that is going to be uh, more extreme than the parents and not exactly the blend of the parents. Why transgressive segregation is important? Uh, take a look. The greater range of the genotypes, uh, the greater range of the phenotypes, and under certain uh, circumstances, uh, some phenotypes can be better fit than the other phenotypes, and that means that they would have uh, better chances to survive, would have better uh, fitness than other ph phenotypes. But other phenotypes also can have under different circumstances have better chances to survive what other application uh, for example many indian farmers would get seeds from american seed companies and uh, they uh, trying to use the seeds uh, for the next uh, harvest uh, in order to save money and not purchasing seeds every year from american companies but actually they do not get the same results as with original seeds because uh, what they get from American companies would be hybrid seeds. Seeds of the hybrids and hybrid uh, generation would show uniform uh, traits in uh, basically for every trait. They would uh, uh, be uh, ripe at the same time, would be of the uniform size, shape, color and so on. But if you would use seeds uh, from this generation, which would be result of the self-pollination in the next generation, as you see, you would have such a great segregation of uh, traits or transgressive segregation that uh, basically you would not going to get the same uniform uh, harvest as uh, you got from uh, hybrid generation. That's why Indian farmers have to purchase seeds every year from uh, American companies and uh, they basically depend on those seeds. But actually knowing what's happening uh, with uh, uh, the straight uh, segregation, they uh, can use this knowledge for selection work and basically can reproduce this hybrid generation, but it needs a time and some effort. But this is something uh, that can be possible to achieve. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.